히트 다 히트. 히트. 시즌 2. And I also just want to add one more point to it. Is like the mothership core should not have been at the third base. There wasn't even a pylon to overcharge there. Deer just kind of that was the last place he wanted it. Yeah, it would have been more useful in the main base. What if the liberator came from that angle, which it did later on? But anyways, this is a 1-0 for Gumiel. We'll see if Deer can get the momentum back here. Going into the new Gettysburg for game number two. Going into set number two of the final match of Group B, down in the bottom left in the red, the Protoss player, it is Deer. And down to the bottom right in blue, the Terran player bringing it back in game number one, it is Gumiho. So, tables have turned here in this first one. Gumiho is now one win away from knocking Deer out. Deer came through. A very tough group to get here. And he himself, I feel, has made vast improvements over his performances at the end of Heart of the Swarm. In Legacy of the Void, he's looking like his old Wings of Liberty self. And I, I feel like that last game, sometimes I'm really critical of the losing player. And I know we're somewhat critical at the Mothership Core positioning, but I feel like Deer played really well in that last game. But Gumiho is just so good at that kind of tug of war pressure. And this is another map where you can absolutely do that because it's very short rush distance by ground. But this is Deer's high priority map choice. This is priority one. The map priority, obviously, the top map is the one that's going to get in if your opponent uh, doesn't have a higher one. Like your top priority map pretty much always gets in. Um, and it will be the first map if both people highly prioritize it. Gumiho didn't pick it, so it comes in here as map number two. I'll probably have to like one day f fully explain how the map party works. It's kind of, once you kind of get how it works, it's not that complicated. Very basically, it's like the higher priority maps for both players get in. Yeah. Like, so, uh, you know, and they, they have different rankings, right? You know, he picked it second, the other guy picked it third. It's probably going to get in third, and maybe one of the other, you know, first picks for one of the players gets in at first or second. And maybe the first pick of the other player gets in first, you know, something like that. If they have. Similar maps, if they both pick the same map, it's almost definitely, I think, 100% gets into the pool. That's why uh, stats try to pick maps um, against the, or excuse me, against uh, Bomber. That they, he picked the same maps as Bomber, so that even if Sejong was there, it wouldn't make it into the priority because you, if all, th if both players highly prioritize three different maps higher than Sejong, then Sejong won't make the list. So it's kind of like a strategy that you can do in that. Yeah ban pick phase, or there's no bans, but you know. That I guess Bomber phase. probably had to pick first because stats is higher seed, just in general stats as the finalist of last SSL. Yep. All makes sense, all comes together eventually. I think it's a blind pick though, uh, actually when I think about it, it's probably blind pick. That would make more sense, but yeah. then it raises the question, you know, how did he, how did he know that Bomber was going to pick those maps? Maybe he just knows Bomber so well, or Terran so well, that he's like, no, I, you know, I just knew. <laughs> And uh, guessed it pretty well. But before we get too bogged into this, like, this map is Deer's pick. That's kind of why I started this conversation. And the Cyclone that we see here is somewhat predictable because I think it's, in my opinion, even better of a map for Cyclone pushes than Frozen Temple. Second Cyclone was started and then canceled. I think you wanted him to think. It was a very intentional move that he was going to go for a double Cyclone. Keeps the first one defensively. Also has that Supply Depot, so follow-up scouts for Deer are going to be very tough to pull off. And he's going for Stim. He wants this to look like it's a Cyclone push, but he's actually going for a very early ground-based bio pressure. Mm. Like I described, he's so good at this pressure, getting this tempo advantage and running with it. And this may be something that we see here in the second game, uh, overthrow Deer. He needs to scout this yeah. and be prepared. I mean, look at the build of Deer on the opposite side. He makes two Oracles to keep Gumi on his side of the, on the, uh, of the map, but he's going to have the Cyclone. He's going to have a lot of bio. He's also making an Engineering Bay to get turrets, but also the plus one to make this bio push stronger. It's going to really help with the defense right against the Oracles. But also behind this, Deer is making a third base. Coming in here, trying to snipe that Cyclone. He needs to kill that. The mass repair, and he does get it. Now what is there to There's deal no with the oracles? There's no anti-air at all. He's got one marine just popped out, not here. Yeah, this actually is probably his game. That's just way too much damage, GG. That's going to be it. Taking a really quick one. Mind games.
He had this planned from the beginning. We said it early in the game, and very obvious, Gumio would do a Cyclone-oriented build. Whether he goes for the fast stim or not, he usually doesn't have very many Marines at this timing. He pulls yeah. the Oracles, focuses down the Cyclone, and as you guys saw, even with a full surround repair, the Cyclone dies. There was no turret, the Cyclone dies, he has no more anti-air. Even if he had a few Marines, they would have died. No more anti-air, game ends. Would have happened if he didn't go for the stim build, went for the tank fall, or even the, the second Cyclone would have probably been the only way he lived. And that was funny because Deer saw that he was making it, but he even he, even he called yeah. that as BS. He knew it wasn't real. Very, it's, really cool build here by Deer. Uh, Deer is such a smart player, you know, you were pointing it out. Gumio more of like a multitasking god. He's really just going to get across. He does have good builds, but I feel like Deer is more of like a cerebral, he's a thinking player. And, I mean, that was designed to kill Gumio, right? That was a build designed to kill Gumio on the map that Deer picked, and he gets that win. So now we go into game number three. That was